I can start recording now. It's fine because we can record. we can actually edit it later. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi How are you, everybody? Alhamdulillah. How about you? Alhamdulillah, not too bad. Alhamdulillah. Happy to be back uh, to this yes. course. And uh, I hope you had a good summer. Inshallah, you know, we can uh, go back to the study of Quran. I'm really looking forward to this new year. And, you know, can share and learn together about Quran and Tajweed. Yes. Have you been practicing your Tajweed during summer? Yes, I am. A little yeah. bit. A little bit? <laughs> a little bit. Okay, just keep it as a habit. I don't know how many people we have on the, uh, on the group right now. I think I have a way of knowing. Um, I think so far I see six participants. Still shy participation, but it's okay. No problem, Shab. All right, so let me start then. If you are ready, do you have any questions? Or um, you are fine if we start? Everybody hears me? Yes, we are fine. Okay, inshallah. Then let me just get sure, sure that I get everything on the right track and then I can share my screen with you. Um, yes, let me see. Um, yeah, share screen. Okay. All right, so you can see my screen, I think. All right. Bismillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, rabbi shalah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisan yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum again, everyone. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. I hope, I hope we are doing well. Uh, we have ended last time, uh, a few weeks back with Surah Al-Infitar, right? Yes. Chapters yes. 1 to, eight, to 19, it's actually the whole, the whole chapter. Uh, verses, verses 1 to 19, sorry. So um, as is the, the practice usually for us, we are going to uh, collect some of the participants' recitations of this chapter before moving on to the chapter for today. Chapter 83, yeah, uh, Surah al -Mutafishin. So just the previous chapter, chapter 82. Uh, should we have a few volunteers to uh, recite it for us? Inshallah, who wants to go ahead? I have the chapter just in front of you here. You can see it, right? You can see it on your screens? Yes. Everybody? Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. So how about we start then, Bismillah? Anyone? Do we have some raised hands? Or should I ask people randomly? I can do that. I can do that. Um, Sister Bonita, do you want to try? Yes, inshallah. All right, let's do it. Okay. Can you hear me clearly? I'm sorry? Can you hear me clearly? Very clearly. Okay. okay. <clears throat> A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Idha as-samaa'u fatarat wa idha kawakibun tasarat wa idha biha rufutirat Okay can you sorry to interrupt can you recite a number two again? Wa idha ka wa idha ka Okay. Go ahead. Wa idha biha rufutirat. Wa idha kubu rubu sirat. Okay. Make sure that we hear the lamb here. وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بَعْثِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ Okay, uh -huh. okay. وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْصِرَتْ عَلِمَتْ نَفْسُ مَا قُدَّمَتْ وَأَخْخَرَتْ Okay, maybe you slow down here because you were this fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in this part, yeah. عَلِمَتْ نَفْسُ مَا قُدَّمَتْ وَأَخْخَرَتْ Alimat nafsum ma kot 
Qadamat wa akharat. Okay. Ya, okay. Go ahead. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal karim. Okay. Ma gharraka. 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 Go. Go. Asal my homework still like that I think go with the go. Ah uh, your homework okay. So yes. ga the, the the letter ga or the sound ga go only exists in dialects of Arabic. But uh -huh. ra is standard Arabic. So if you say ga garrak it's go. not standard Arabic. Ra. Go. Go. And you don't have to round it. You don't need to say ro ro ra. Mm -hmm. يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم. Okay, try again, Sean. Okay. يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم. Okay, so your homework, Shana, is to work on this. Still. <laughs> okay, go. 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 Okay. All right, let's continue. Okay. <clears throat> Alladhi khalaqo fasawwa pa... Khalaqa ka. Ay, sorry. Alladhi khalaqo ka fasawwa ka pa adalak. Fasawwa ka. You see there's uh, an alif in oh, yeah, pink? Yeah. It's yeah. called the uh, alif al-khanjariya. The hidden dagger. Dagger alif. Mm -hmm. Alladhi khalaqa ka fasawwa ka pa adalak. Okay? Okay. Let's try it. Alladhi khalaqo ka fasawwa ka fa'adalak. You missed it. Fasawwa ka fa'adalak. Fasawwa ka fa'adalak. Fasawwa ka fa'adalak. Okay. Good. Very good. Fi ayi suratim ma sha rakkabak. Okay. Kalla ba tu kazibu nabit. Okay, we'll stop there. Uh, I would say also work on the quality of the lamb. Can you read this sec uh, ayah number nine again? Kalla. 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 Go ahead, continue. Kalla ba tu kazibu na bittin. Okay, good. So just the lamb. Kalla bal tu kazibu na bittin. Bal. Kalla bal, kalla kalla bal tu kazibu na bittin. Mashallah, very good sister. Jazakallah khair, barakallah hu fiq. All right, let me ask another person to recite. Alhamdulillah, we have a higher number now, one plus one. Volunteers, volunteers? Anyone? What is... Brother Yusuf, still here? Yes. Okay. Inshallah. Why don't you try, brother? Okay. Aud billah min ash-shaytani wa-deem. Bismillahi wa-hmani wa-heem. In wa inna alaykum lahafidhim. Kiraman katibim. يعلمون ما تقلو إن الأبرار لذي نعيم وإن الفجار لذي جهيم يسلونها يوم الدين وما هم أنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يوم يذن لله. Okay, جزاك الله خير, brother. Ah, that's good. Um, 
And the good thing is that you have slow paced recitation, so you can focus on every sound. Okay. Just uh, try not to lengthen some vowels too long. For example, yawma la tamliku. So this yawma, try your best not to make the, uh, the fatha too long. Yawma, yawma la tamliku nafsun li nafsin shay'a. And the same for this uh, dhamma here. Wal amru. Not well, but it's fine. I mean, this is just something you can fix with the time uh, of repetition and also with the memorization of this um, chapter, inshallah. So, Jazakallah khair, my dear brother. Okay, now let's get to today's um, chapter. And we will also have a chance to practice at the end of today's session for recitation. So, Suratul Mutafifin, we are going to today. Uh, cover area number one to area number 12. Okay, uh, it's um, 12 times three, I think it's 36 verses. Okay. Yeah, it's 36 verses, so we'll divide it by three, inshallah. So today we are going to do the first part that is area one to area 12. I just want to clarify do you hear me well? The song is a bit weak, actually. On yeah. You. The reason why I'm asking about this is because um, I don't have my microphone today. I'm just using the computer's microphone. Mm. So I want to try to uh, fix something around. Is it better now? Is it a bit louder? Yes. A little bit. A bit louder. Just try my best to maximize the input so you can hear me better. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that small uh, interruption. All right. So uh, let me recite for you, my brothers and sisters, this uh, year, number one to twelve. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmanir r-Rahim. Wailun lil mutaffifin. Al-ladin idha ktalu ala al-nas yastawfun. وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين كلا إن كتاب الفجار لفي سجين وما أدراك ما سجين كتاب مرقوم ويل يومئذ للمكذبين الذين يكذبون بيوم الدين وما يكذب به إلا كل معتد أثيم. So we will stop at uh, A number twelve, inshallah. Now, if you are uh, memorizing Quran, uh, you will notice sometimes that there are some verses which get repeated in the same chapter, which facilitates uh, the memorization. Right. So starting uh, with this, um, I would say with this chapter of the Quran, okay. Uh, let me give you a general background about it. First of all, huh? first, Surah Al-Mutaffifin, Al-Mutaffifin, has a few other names. So, for example, among scholars, for example, Al-Bukhari, uh, in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari, he uses the label. Surat Wailun bin Mutafifin. So in Sahih al Bukhari, when it is mentioned, it's mentioned as Surat Wailun lil Mutafifin. So the whole verse one is used as a title for this chapter. Um, other people, uh, Mufassirin, people who have done uh, tafsir of Quran, they call it also Surat al Tatfif, Surat al Tatfif. So it has basically three different uh, names, excluding these three, 
there is no other name for this chapter. So either al mutaffifin or Surah al tatfif or Surah Wailun lil mutaffifin Now, let's get to know about where it was revealed or whether it is a mid, uh, from Medina, Medani, or from Mecca, Mecca. So there is a debate about this. Uh, whether this chapter is a Meccan chapter or Medina from Medina chapter. Um, <clears throat> and basically it boils down to um, the proponents. Some people say it is Meccan because um, of the content inside this chapter. So the content, of course, we know that uh, the Surah Al-Makki, Makki Surah, deal with Aqidah, with Judgment Day, with uh, description of uh, you know, uh, Jahannam, Jannah, Jahannam. And um, this is one of the reasons why many people um, classify it as a Makki Surah. So, for example, if we take just this, the case of chapter uh, 13, uh, sorry, verse 13, um, here is another evidence of why this chapter is Meccan. So, إذا تطلع لي آياتنا قال أساطير الأولين. This is a formula or a sentence uh, which has been said to the Prophet by the disbelievers in Mecca. Right? So, in Mecca, this was uttered to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the disbelievers. So, there are other scenes uh, that also may cause people to classify this chapter as Meccan. Uh, for example, in verses 29 and 30, <inaudible> Indeed, the wicked used to laugh at the believers. <inaudible> and they winked to one another whenever they passed by them. So when the believers passed by the disbelievers, the disbelievers used to laugh at them. And this is something that happened to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mecca. So is another reason which strongly supports the argument that this is a Meccan chapter. So I would say the majority of scholars would say this is a chapter, a Meccan chapter. Among the people who say that it's a Medini, Medinan chapter, they say uh, some of them are uh, people like Ibn Abbas. We know Ibn Abbas is a very famous uh, interpreter of the Quran. He, uh, he was called uh, as Tarjuman al Quran, the interpreter of the Quran. And why does Ibn Abbas say it's Madani? Because of the reasons of uh, revelation. Why was it revealed, this chapter? You know, uh, in Arabic we say, Sabab al Nuzul, reasons for revelation. So here's the story, the background story. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, reached Medina, he found that uh, some of the people there were amongst the worst in Kayl. Um, Kayl meaning uh, the worst at defrauding people when scaling and measuring goods and products when selling, making trade. So it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this chapter due to the widespread practices in Medina at that time. So that's the second hypothesis. Uh, a third set of scholars, and they are minority, um, say that it's, uh, it was revealed between Mecca and Medina. One of them is uh, Muhammad Tahir ibn Ashur. This one is a famous Tunisian scholar, you know, my country. And he says, um, uh, it was revealed, in fact, between Mecca. It might have been revealed between Mecca and Medina because it has connection to the two cities, as we have explained uh, just now. So, starting with ayah number one, the translation says, Woe to the defrauders. Okay. Wail, wail, this word wail uh, is used as a warning or a threat from a great evil which is about to happen to the person being warned or the party being referred to. And in this case, it's al-mutaffif, okay? Uh, mutaffif 
comes from tatfif, which refers to taking away uh, something small. So you have a, a, like an entity and you take something small from it. And it refers to the practice of traders or merchants or generally speaking, um, people involved in trade or business who when they measure or scale an item or a product, they will take away some of what is being scaled to their benefit. So they will defraud the customer by not giving him or her their full rights, right? So this is dishonest. It's a dishonest practice and it's explained in the chapter, in the verse that follows after verse number one, verse number two and number three, uh, explaining uh, the practice of these defrauders and mutasifin. Um, I'm going to come in a few minutes, in a few seconds, actually, to verse two and three. But I just want to refresh your memory about a famous nation, uh, an ummah or a nation which was punished for its tatif, meaning taking away when making business. Do you remember which one in the Quran? Which nation was punished because of its practice of tatif? You can participate if you want. <laughs> have you heard about it in the Quran? Now we have, mashallah, 10 participants. You can also participate uh, in the dialogue box. Huh? I want to make this uh, more or less interactive. Yes. Sorry, Dr. Salim. Can you repeat the question? Sure, of Watch course. It. So there's a famous nation that was punished because of its uh, practice here, top thief, meaning Scaling to the benefit, taking problem. away, right, taking away some of the, the, the items, the goods, you know, defrauding, fooling the customer, taking away from their rights. Do you know, sister? Shweb, alayhi salam, is coming good. to my mind. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. So the people, the nation of Shuaib is Median, and there used to be... Um, famous or actually for, for a bad reason that they used to have this practice and they were punished for it. So um, it is mentioned in Surah Al-Shu'ara. Uh, Surah Al-Shu'ara is chapter 26. So we have here, it's a good intervention sister, you are right. Uh, so in chapter 26, we have this reference to those people, Qawm Shu'aib. And Shu'aib is admonishing them and he says to them, Will you not fear Allah? If and a few verses later, so if you want to take note, 26, uh, 177. And uh, if we go a bit further, we will explain why uh, they were punished. So here it says in Ayah 182, 183, وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسَ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ وَلَا تَعْثَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ So this is the recommendation of how to deal with people. Wait with an even balance and do not defraud people of their property, nor go about spreading corruption, corruption in the land. Right? This was reference to uh, people of Shu'aib. So coming back to Surah Al-Muttafifin, which is exactly... Uh, um, uh, in direct reference to this practice, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Woe! Woe to the defrauders. الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ Those who take full measure when they buy from people. So, as is explained in this verse, here is one way how these crooks or defrauders uh, dishonestly deal in business practices. They take away from what is due towards their counterpart when buying some goods, right? So when they buy from people, they take more when it's what, than what is due to them. Uh, so they take their rights in full, right? But when it comes to selling, ayah number three, what happens? But they give less when they measure or weigh for buyers. So when they buy, they take more then what is due to them? More, be, meaning, like they say in Arabic, more than enough, and just more than that. 
And when it comes to actually selling, they remove uh, what is due to the people they are selling to. So being unfair to their customers. Woe to them. Um, so something important here to teach you, inshallah. Um, we have in Arabic two, uh, two words, kail, uh -huh, and wazanuhum. So waktalu, uh, it comes from al-kail. Al-kail wal-mizan. Al-kail wal-mizan. So if I can show you, um, maybe using uh, uh, Google Translate, or maybe you just listen to me. Um, when we talk about al-kail or al-mikyal, we refer to measuring uh, size or quantity in the Quran, right? Size or quantity. But when we talk about uh, al-wazn, al-wazn or al-mizan, then we are talking about measuring weight, not quantity or size, but weight. So you see, one is about size or measure, quantity, size or quantity. And wasn't is about weight, how much it weighs. Okay, this is just a distinction in terms of weight. So to summarize area number one, two, three, these people, they do not accept area number two. They do not accept to have anything taken, taken away from them when they buy goods, yet they do not return the favor when selling, meaning they take away from their customers when trading with others. All right, ayah number four. أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ Do such people not think that they will be resurrected? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, do they not wake up and realize that they will be resurrected on judgment day and they will be facing Allah Azza wa Jal who will then judge them for every small and big items that they took unlawfully. Did they not think or consider that Allah uh, was not aware of their malpractices? And then ayah number five, so it's a continuation of ayah four, they are connected. <laughs> They will be resurrected too, or for a tremendous day, right? They will be resurrected for a tremendous day. A tremendous day. We know the word azim shows the might, the majesty, the magnificence, the amazing quality of that day. Azim, the yawmin azim. So calling to these people to realize their corrupt ways. Then in ayah number six, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The day, this magnificent, tremendous day, all people will stand before the Lord of all worlds. So it's still in the questioning mode, meaning do they not realize that they will be standing on that day in front of their lords, the Lord of the worlds. So this tremendous day, اليوم العظيم, brothers and sisters, all people will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be resurrected. يبعثون, they will be resurrected. We will be resurrected to face judgment, right? So it is tremendous. It is heavy. How long will it last? The Quran tells us. We have the answer to that question. How long will this day last? Do we have an answer from my brothers and sisters about the length of judgment day? Do we know this? We have the answer. Now the Quran answers itself or explains itself. Do we know how long the day of judgment lasts? To show you how tremendous this day is. Right? al al -Azim. Any answers from my brothers and sisters? No? Okay. So there is a chapter in the Quran, chapter, uh, chapter 70. Yeah. Chapter 70, Al-Ma'arij. Al-Ma'arij. So um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how long this day lasts. So the chapter starts like this. 
Se'alese Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Se'alese ilun bi'azabin vaqi'a Lil kafirina leysa lahu dafi'a Minallahi zil ma'arij Listen carefully This is the answer to the question How long will that day last? Ta'aruju al-malaikatu wal-ruhu ilayhi Fi yawmin kana miqdaruhu khamsina alfa sana the angels will ascend to Allah with Jibreel alayhi salam on a day, the day on which judgment will take place, 50,000 years. Allahu Akbar. 50,000 years. It's just not 24 hours. 50,000 years. So that is a tremendous day indeed. So the, the, the word yawmun azim, this ayah number um, Two, yes, I think so. Yes, a number name number two. No, let me check. Yeah, yeah, a number five. Sorry, the Yawmin Adim. This is a tremendous day. So you see the scale, the heavy weight of that day, fifty thousand years. So tremendous. It's indeed. This is a very relevant term for that day, Adim, to say the least. So what will people do? They will be standing, as. Ayah number six explains, Yaqum. You know, when we call, call the salah, we have adhan, and then we have qiyam. Aqim is salah. People will be standing, standing for 50,000, uh, 50,000 years. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So this is what we call yawmul qiyamah, day of judgment. Right? We know we know how to call the Day of Judgment in Arabic, right? Yawmul Qiyamah Qiyamah We are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Qiyamah We are waiting This is the parallel between why it's called Judgment Day in fact Because people are in Qiyamah They are waiting for the judgment So if we are believers, alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers and for the righteous he will make this day shorter. But for the disbelievers, it will last a very long time. In fact, um, I saw here a small note. Uh, here, I want to show you. Do you see my screen? Brothers, sisters, do you see my screen? Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So in fact, here, when we talk about that length of that day of 50,000 years, um, here, Judgment Day will seem like 50,000 years for a disbeliever, but it will seem like a very short period for a believer. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet وسلم, is reported in a hadith collected by Imam Ahmad to have said that for the believer, this long period will take, will be like the time they took to perform a single prayer in the world. Allahu Akbar. Some people say uh, the time between Dhuhr prayer and Asr. That's some hadith say that. So, alhamdulillah, this is a rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah on the believers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people whose judgment will be smooth and short, inshallah, and, Amen. and Amen. easy. So, uh, we have this ayah number six. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Then we have ayah number seven. Kalla. كَلَّا إِنَّ كِتَابَ الْفُجَّارِ لَفِي سِجِّينَ But no, kalla, nay, the wicked are certainly bound for sijin, sijin, in the depths of hell. Let me explain to you this, my brothers and sisters. We have, first of all, we have this word kalla. And we have explained in the past that in the Qur'an, kalla can mean two things. Either when Allah negates the actions of the disbelievers, nay, nay, like this case here, right? So it means rebuffing or uh, negating or deterring. And there is another meaning for kalla, it means indeed, indeed, okay? In this case, the meaning of kalla is nay or not, or it is not as you think, right? Um, so we have the, those people, Al-Fujjar, the wicked people. Allah is describing, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
how their actions will be in a book, book of deeds or record that will be preserved in Sidji. And let me explain to you uh, what is Sidji. Sidji um, is a book which documents the actions of all the evil doers in this world from the beginning of humanity. So it contains all the most evil and blameworthy actions of humanity. And it will be recorded that those mutafifin will also have their records in this book of bad deeds. So Al-Fujjar is directly record, uh, relating to the practice of those people trading in business with malpractice or unethical type of uh, business practices. Now, although, um, although Al-Mutafifin specifically refers to business practices, but it can also refer to, uh, generally speaking, our actions as a human that sometimes we want a bit more than what is due to us, or we want to give people less of their rights. So it can be understood also as in that sense, not just in terms of typically or, or, or purely economic uh, financial transactions, but also in terms of how sometimes we should give due, um, uh, the, the due salary or the due, um, what people deserve, whatever that quality or that unit is, we should give. Sometimes people take away uh, from that. So it can be anything. So, in the Kitab al Fujjari la fi sijin. So, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, sometimes in the chapters of Surah uh, of uh, Juz Amma, the last chapters from 78 to 114, it usually has a parallel where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of paradise and then immediately after the people of hell. Or sometimes, like in this case, the evildoers, the disbelievers, the people of hellfire, and then coming to the people of paradise. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 7, verse 7, start uh, with those evildoers? The answer is straightforward. Uh, there are two reasons. First of all, is because Allah is talking about mutafifi, right? The second reason, it has to do with the previous chapter we've seen a few weeks back or a few months back, uh, that is Al-Infitar. And specifically, um, ayah number 14 of Surah Al-Infitar. Yeah. So Allah is, we have here a connection between the end of the previous chapter and the beginning of this chapter, right? So this is a way for you to understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather than talking about the people of Jannah, is talking about the people of hell. So we said two reasons. First, because it's the theme of the chapter, al mutafifin and secondly, to, to connect to the end of the uh, previous chapter. Okay. So let's move on to ayah number eight, inshallah. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سِجِّينَ All right, just make sure you pronounce it with a noon. Sijin, Sijin, without qalqala, right? Don't say Sijin. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سِجِّينَ Sijin, Sijin, okay, not Sijil. That's another word, right? That is uh, in a, uh, I think it's Al Fil. Alam Tara Kaifa Fada Rabbuka bi Ashab al Fil, Alam Yaja al Kaida Hun Fi Tadlil, Wa Arsala Ali him Tayran Ababil, Tarni him bi Hijaratim min Sijil. That's different, it's not the same. So that's Sijil, and this is Sijin. Okay, as I told you, um, uh, let me just uh, explain a bit more about Sijin here. In Aya. So in this verse, we have a sentence which is very common in Juz Amma, or the beginning of a sentence which is very common in Juz Amma. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ And what will make you realize? Okay, 
So we have this happening in different chapters of the Quran, especially in Juz Amma. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is magnifying what is being referred to, showing the importance of what is being referred to. So for example, we have in us uh, chapters Al-Haqqa. Al-Haqqa, Mal-Haqqa, wa ma adraka Mal-Haqqa. Or Al-Qari'a, Mal-Qari'a, wa ma adraka Mal-Qari'a. So you see, this is to magnify the event. So Al-Haqq and Al-Qari'a are both referring to Judgment Day. In this case, it is referring to the magnitude and the importance of this book. So as we said, um, this book is recording all the evil actions from people from the beginning of humanity. Um, and Allah is showing how mighty or scary or beyond our thoughts that record is. So this kitab, or record of things showing us um, the magnificence. And the magnificence lies in the fact that it records every detail contained within it. There are so many details uh, of all these uh, actions and deeds. So showing us the importance of this book. Um, then in the next verse, Kitabun Marqum. So Marqum, a fate already sealed. So, this is explaining this uh, book, my brothers and sisters, this record of deeds. Marku means marked or sealed. Uh, or in other words, something easy to understand is um, it has a writing. It is written with a writing which cannot be erased. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be uh, removed or subtracted from it. Once it is there, for example, especially addressing those people, al mutafifin the disbelievers, it's like talking to them. Do not imagine that if your name is there, it will be dropped. Once it's there, you cannot be dropped from the record of uh, Sijin. So, Marqum, um, something inscribed, sealed, written, engraved. Um, and this word, Marqum, if you are familiar with uh, Surah Al-Kahf, it can remind you of something similar, inshallah. So you remember Surah Al-Kahf? Surah Al-Kahf tells us about some youngsters who are believers and they hide from a persecuting uh, monarch or king. And then um, in Ayah 9 of chapter 18, as I said to you, Marqum, right? You remember Marqum? In Ayat 9, أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِيمِ مَرْقُومْ وَالرَّقِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا So we said that Marqum refers to something inscribed, engraved, or sealed. For this specific case, uh, the translation says, Have you, O prophet, prophet, thought that the people of the cave and the plague, or the plaque, were the only wonders of our sign? So if we click on this, what does it say? Uh-huh. Ar-Raqim is the, the plaque, 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 that was placed at the entrance of the cave with the names and the story of the people of the cave, something inscribed. This is the story of a group of Christian youths who hid inside a cave outside the city of Ephesus around, this is historical. The Quran does not give us an exact number of the youth. Anyways, what, what the point is here is that it is a plaque where the names are uh, recorded, right? Where this meaning of marqum here is understood uh, using another chapter and another verse of the Quran. So here it is ar-raqim, and in Surah Al-Mutafifin, it's marqum. Okay. So um, in ayah number 10 now, after this reference to this sealed book, or this faith that is sealed. So again, we have this word wailun, wailun. As we mentioned in the first ayah, uh, it started the chapter, in fact, wailun lil mutafikin. Wailun Woe on the day to the deniers. Well, obviously, this is the deniers of the day, of the day of judgment, right? Um, 
So whale, as we said, is a warning or it's a threat, a warning from a threat that is happening, coming to happen, going to happen. Um, and uh, it is sure for the believer, we have yaqeen, the believers know that this day will happen, right? We have tasdeeq, we have faith, we have belief, firm belief that this day is going to happen. But for the disbelievers, they are mukaddibin, they are deniers, they deny the truth, right? Of that day. So since I earlier mentioned Surah Al Ma'arij, um, I just want to go back to it to show you the truth of this day. The truth of this day in the first ayah, a challenger, someone who was uh, disbelieving or discussing or denying the day of judgment, has demanded a punishment bound to come. So it is bound to happen, whether he believes or he does not believe. Right? Even if it's going to happen, they still deny. Um, then after that, we have Ayah 11. What about those people? Those people who deny, to those deniers, just as we said, what do they deny? They deny judgment day. So uh, this verse, verse 11, is clarifying what they are denying from verse 10. And um, as we have explained, in Juz Amma, chapter 78 to 114, it is focused on the day of judgment and the accountability that we have on that day. So uh, the word ad-deen, yawm uh, refers to religion, right? So deen, deen means the religion, but it also refers to accountability or judgment. So it has two meanings, right? And I think you know that. So when you when you hear people um, people's names, people's names, right? Najmuddin, my son is called Shamsuddin, Sirajuddin, Salahuddin, the the light of Allah, of the light of the religion, uh, you know, uh, the star. Anything a deen refers to the religion, but at the same time, another meaning of a deen is um, accountability or judgment. How do we know that? Well, if you are familiar with Arabic language, we know there is a proverb in Arabic, كَمَا تُدِينُ تُدَن I'm trying to find it for you, <laughs> but uh, you can actually Google it. What it means, yeah, what it means is that um, you sh uh, as you treat others, you will be treated. Showing the accountability, like there is a short reference to it in English, people say, what goes around comes around. So this word a deen is also referring to accountability, yawmuddin, the day of accountability, the day of judgment. Okay. And then finally, in the last ayah for today, وَمَا يُكَذِّبُ بِهِ إِلَّا كُلُّ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ So we have here, make sure, when you read it, this is Ibhar, right? مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ وَمَا يُكَذِّبُ بِهِ إِلَّا كُلُّ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ Now, we have a better idea in this verse uh, as to the ones who are deniers of the Day of Judgment. They have two traits. They have two uh, not qualities, but two characteristics. Mu'atadin, a theme. Mu'atadin, a theme. So first, let's look at the easy one. A theme is sinful. They are sinful in general. They commit sin. They are bound to commit sin. They are inclined to commit sins. But at the same time, they sin by transgressing. So uh, mu'atad means someone who exceeds the boundaries. Yatida means someone who has gone beyond certain boundaries. So it can apply to different situations. For example, if we take the context of belief, the one who goes beyond the boundaries of belief, he will commit shirk, for instance. That is transgressing the boundaries of deen or iman. Transgressing the boundary will be committing shirk. Uh, it can also take the form of actions. For instance, if we say he has transgressed 
the rights of others, meaning he has abused their rights. Like we said for this chapter, people who abuse the rights of others by taking from their uh, wealth or from their goods when they do business, uh, well, by doing actions like top thief, right? Taking away a few things, thinking that they will win, but they are losers. Uh, and can also be part of um, monetary transactions like riba, right? Riba, we know that in, in Islam, riba is a haram. Haram, haram, it's very sinful to engage in, in usury, meaning taking interests from people, right? So that is transgressing the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can also take the form of abuse, physically abusing people. You are transgressing the rights of others. Uh, you're going beyond, you know, what is lawful and getting into their space or privacy or hurting them physically or mentally, morally. So that is ma'tad, ma'tad, someone who transgresses. A theme is sinful in general. So it feels like this a theme is, while this one is taking the rights of others, this one is sinning against yourself. A theme, committing sins against yourself. Um, so we are going to stop here on verse 12, inshallah. And we have a few minutes for both questions. And we will continue a few uh, practices of recitation with many of our brothers and sisters here. So I'm open now to um, maybe entertain your questions, my brothers and sisters. Let me see. Do you have any questions? And I'm so, inshallah, for, uh, starting from next week, I will change the microphone so that everybody can hear me better. Um, any questions from the audience? Let me see. We have uh, about 10 participants. Do you have questions? If we don't have questions, we can go to the recitation. Okay, so let's see then. Um, Bismillah. Let's see if we have uh, volunteers for the recitation. We have. We're going to give everybody a chance. Um, I see. Oh, I see a raised hand, uh, but it says iPhone. Okay, whoever raised their hand, please, please go ahead. Um, I can only see the name. The name is not mentioned, but there is the oh, it's me. iPhone. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Are you on your iPhone? <laughs> uh, because there's something wrong with my iPad. <laughs> so. No problem. No problem. As long as you're here, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so. I'm also feeling very uncomfortable to use it. I don't know where to press the button and what to do. <laughs> no problem. You are you are still with us, so no problem. <laughs> Yeah. How about we recite, inshallah, and we can together work uh, a good recitation, work on a good recitation, inshallah. Go yes, ahead. inshallah. Don't forget, a'udhu billahi Yeah, sure. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wailul lil mutwaffifin. Allazina izal... Sorry. Allazina izak... Talu alanna si yastawfoon. Wa iza kalu hum au wazanu hum yuxirun. Ala yazunu ula ika. Sorry. You did perfectly, oh, perfectly almost, but just when you stop at va, you make it za. The other ones you didn't make a mistake, but this one you just can't help it. No, it's the Allah Yazun. No, no, I'm I'm wrong with no. No, you're, you're not. Oh, okay, got it. 
So oh, yeah, it. it's here. This the central letter, not the last. The noon is fine. You don't have a problem oh. with the noon. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead. Ala yazunu ula ika annahum mab'usun. Okay, you're still doing it. And you are ah. doing also mab'usun. Be careful here. Mab'usun. I'm talking about the fa of mab'usun. Sa, sa. You see the fa, fa, right? Exactly. Mab'usun. Okay, mab'usun. Good job. Want to try again? Yep, sure. Alaya zunnu ula ika annahum mab'uthun. MashaAllah. Good. Very good. Liyawmin azim. 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 Subhanu rabbi al-azim. Yes, azim. Liyawmin azim. I still hear the zeb, but it's okay, inshallah. You can work on it. Azim. This is your homework. Azim. Now, sister, you know your homework, right? I think maybe probably because I'm not sure, you know, our native languages sometimes will influence the way we pronounce things. Maybe the this sound does not exist um, in your native language of law and the right no there yeah. is what I hear but is is that. Is, 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 I'm not here yeah. no. <laughs> uh, uh, the can, do you can distinguish it is a question of think... distinguishing it actually do you hear the yeah. quality to it you mean you mean za za or yeah see this is what I'm saying I'm saying va and you're saying za so there are two different yeah. letters I think wow. maybe they are merged in your native language yeah uh, probably merge. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's better. Azim, okay. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> but understand. still, yeah, I, I'm trying to yeah, yeah get it, but still, yeah, sometimes in pronunciation, I know there is a I think these are the lot, letters lot that are probably more challenging for your Tajri. Yeah. yeah. The rest you are doing fine. Go ahead, let's do A6. <laughs> Yawma yaqumun nasu li rabbil alameen Kalla inna kitab al-fujjari lafi sijjeen Okay, wait a bit. I want to hear I want to hear this with the reciter. Because I think this uh, word is pronounced as a fujjari. Not for John. Kalla in the kitab al fujjar in a fee. Fujjari. Not John. Fujjari. It's the same as Nar. You know, Nar. We don't say Nar. Okay. Al fujjar in a fee. Fujjari. Fujjari. Al fujjari. Good. Al Fujjari. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I try again. Kalla inna kitab al Fujjari lafi sijjin. Okay. Wa ma adra ka ma sijjin. Kitabum marqum. Wailun yawma izzilil mukazzibin. You are getting there. You are getting there. Yes. Go ahead. Allazina yukazzibuna biyawmiddin. Wa ma yukazzibu bihi illa kullu mu'tadin as. Okay, I can feel that you're making an effort, Mashallah. Good job, Sister Jazakallah Khair. May Allah bless you and help you, enable you to recite better, Mashallah, with time and practice and patience. I think and listening. You know, sometimes listening helps. Sometimes we're not aware of those sounds. We have to listen a bit more. 
Yes. I don't know exactly. if you um, do you have some like idle time sometimes if you go somewhere you are on the train or on the bus or something just like uh, maybe hear different reciters it is recommended to hear different reciters not the same reciter same. Uh, alternate um, between different reciters you know change the reciters uh, it um, helps you to kind of see different quality of the pronunciation it should uh -huh. be consistent normally it should be consistent yeah that's my recommendation for you, Michelle. Uh, but, but keep actually, going. Yeah? Yeah. Tell me. Uh, uh, sorry, just just uh, sharing. Actually, uh -huh. but I, I I think in different way, I only listen to that Mushari, Asher, uh -huh. Mish, okay. Mishari, what is his name? Okay. So uh, that's Kari, oh, because um, yeah. I think that when I listen to him more, and then maybe uh -huh. I would follow him more and then I can trickle the mistakes and so I can follow him. But if I listen to different one, that, that mm -hmm. confuses me. Okay, then whatever works for you, man, no, no problem. Just do whatever works for you, inshallah. That's yeah, but okay. sometimes I do. Sometimes, yeah, I do listen to others as well when someone right. posted on Facebook or something like that and then I listen for a while, yeah. Yeah, I would say, I would say that's very effective, especially if you're memorizing the Quran. You know, mm. because sometimes if you memorize, let's say, three or four verses, and then you listen to them, you realize, oh, I think I memorized it wrong. I think I put the wrong vowel somewhere. I didn't really recite or pronounce this sound correctly or this letter. And sometimes if you hear always the same recital, you're not aware of that. Unless you hear another one, say, oh, wow, his quality of pronunciation of certain vowels and consonants is different. So. Um, um, yeah, well, that's, that's always good. happened. <laughs> yeah, you know, see how it goes for you. But if whatever works for you, just keep going, inshallah. As long as you're doing it, as long as you're reciting, uh, that's the most important. Jazakallahu mm khairan. -hmm. Jazakallahu khairan. Um, I want to ask another sister, and we'll probably wrap up today's session. I think Sister Rahida has been raising her hand. Um, are you there, sister? Yeah. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kif ha haruki? I don't know how to respond. Don't Sorry, speak Arabic to me. I cannot speak Arabic. Yeah. I was just asking, how are you? Yes, yes. I I could understand, but I did not know how to respond. You just say alhamdulillah. It's easy to answer. Oh, my God. Halas. 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 Okay. Al Mutafifin, did you memorize this chapter before? Uh, yes, I have. I'll okay. try to. I'll try to do the memorization without looking at the mushaf. I'll try. Okay. Let's do that. Go for it. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل للمطففين الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين كلا إن كتاب الفجار لفي سجين وما أدراك ما سجين كتاب مرقوم ويل يومئذ للمكذبين الذين يكذبون بيوم الدين وما يكذب به إلا كل معتد أثيم. جزاك الله خيرا سيستر ما شاء الله. Okay, your recitation, you have done the memorization. Well done. الحمد لله. Yes, that's good. That's very good. ما شاء الله. You have a good recitation and good quality of تجويد. الحمد لله. I don't really have anything to say about it. May Allah enable us to recite the book. Uh, you know, reciting, respecting the way it should be recited and giving every letter its quality and also reaping the reward of uh, the recitation. So one thing I want to tell you, everybody, because I forgot, 
about Sijin. Sijin. So we say that this book has inscribed in it those deeds or those records. And it comes from another word in Arabic. If you're familiar with Arabic, Sijin. Sijin. You know Sijin? Anybody has heard about Sijin before? Let me see. I have a uh, sister. Prison. Yes, very good. Like in Surah Yusuf, I think. I'm sorry? It, it was in Surah Yusuf. Yes, 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 exactly, yes. exactly. So that means it's, it's there, it's trapped there, it's not, it's not going anywhere, it's not going to be altered, it's not going to be changed. It's just sealed there, right? So it has the same radical or the same etymology or connection to the word prison, it's in prison there, it's there. Just for you uh, to remember that. Okay, so um, thank you so much for coming and being here um, for the sake of Allah, you know, to please our creator. And may Allah always make us please him and may Allah make us used for his sake to save this deen, inshallah. Amen. Amen. So uh, please don't forget to recite every day, every day. Inshallah. If I can push you, you know, even if I'm annoying, but if I can push you to recite every day, you know, um, even if you start, I would say, even if you start memorizing a small amount of chapters, you know, work your way towards that and slowly increase, you know, if you, if you do, even if you do a mathematical operation, you know, in your mind, you calculate how many uh, verses of the Quran there are in total. And you say, I want to memorize the whole Quran. How many years will it take me? Inshallah, how many years will it take me to memorize the whole Quran if I, if I just memorize three verses every day? Three verses, you have 24 hours. How many? You, I think it will take you probably five years. Just do it. Do it, you know? You might just think, ah, the Quran is so long. It's so intimidating. It's so discouraging. I cannot memorize. If you just memorize those three verses every day and review what you have memorized before, so it stays always in your heart, in your mind, you know, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate it for you, will facilitate the memorization for you. So I would encourage you, you know, go on that journey, embark on that journey of memorizing the Quran. Inshallah, you see how your life will change. Um, and the daily recitation, there is this word I want to teach you in Arabic of what you have memorized is called the word. Word. Have you heard about this word before? So if someone says to you, I'm going to recite my word, word, uh, W I R D or wow, uh, it means I'm going to recite today what I have memorized so far. My daily word, for example, you know, five chapters. That's my word. I'm going to try to review my word today. Word also is an Urdu word. Is it? Mashallah. Yeah. Oh, does it mean the same? Yeah. It's, it's mean like uh, this your lesson. Uh, and the, like the daily uh, uh, chore that you yeah. want to go through. So you, you have completed that task of memorization or reviewing, even reviewing. Okay, Jazakumullah khair, my dear brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we meet next week. We continue part two of Al Mutashifin. Inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha ila ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum. See you, inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam. 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 Wa alaikum assalam.